Lithuania, situated in Europe on the Baltic Sea, with a long history, fortified castles and splendid palaces. A country that has many religious buildings and also in which amber is to be found, and where religious faith has become an art form. Vilnius, the capital, a city of Baroque, mixed with Gothic, Renaissance and Classicism, a melting pot of culture. Its main landmark is Castle Hill, with its red-coloured Gediminas Tower, that marks the beginning of the city's history. The interior of the tower reflects the Gothic castle of Grand Prince Vitatus. Where today is a splendid city, in bygone times were the first simple dwellings. Vilnius is the political, economic and cultural centre of Lithuania. It has long been forgotten that Germany's Teutonic Knights repeatedly attempted to capture the city and that they almost succeeded. The boulevard begins in Cathedral Square, where, adjoining the cathedral, is a fine white bell tower. The cathedral's interior still radiates a Gothic sense of space. The local people are particularly proud of the cathedral's copy of the Turin Shroud. Following canonization, Prince Casimir was buried in the wonderfully decorated early Baroque chapel. Pilaire Street is the oldest and most beautiful street in the Old Town. It was formerly the route from the castle towards Poland and Russia. Today, a popular destination. In 1514, Konstanty Ostrogski, great hetman of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, had a Russian Orthodox church built here. In the 18th century, it was burned down and then rebuilt according to late Baroque design. It was later transformed into Byzantine style. One of the symbols of the city is the Gate of Dawn, upon which a castle was built. In the 17th century, a portrait of the Holy Virgin Mary was ascribed miraculous powers. The University of Vilnius was founded in 1579. Construction of the St. Johannes Church was completed as a Gothic building in 1426. The 68 meter high bell tower and church were part of the university complex until 1571. The atrium in front of the observatory is one of twelve. The old Litera library and its paintings are protected by magnificent vaults. They contain around five million books that date from the 15th to the 18th century. The Sabivias cloister in the vestibule of the Lituanistic Institute possesses a superb work of art. The reading rooms of the university are the magnificent Pranz and Smugelvisius halls, as well as the Joachim Le Luelhal, noble spaces in which to study original historical texts. Just below Castle Hill is the Gothic Ensemble with its filigree Annan Church and modest St. Bernard Church.
The large wooden altar dates from 1614. And the 12 wooden side altars were created later by sculptor Daniel Giotto. Next is the red brick St. Annan Church. Although the interior is somewhat modest, an iconic altarpiece of the Holy Family shines out in all its glory. Nature plays an important role here too. Just beyond the buildings are the Bernard Gardens, once monastery gardens. Only one of the city's former 96 synagogues has survived. This Jewish house of worship was designed in eclecticism style in 1903. In our journey back to the historic center beyond the river Vilnius Five Bridges is the Artist Republic of Udzupio. Its constitution is written on walls and glass plates. Creativity is all around and all kinds of art can be found here. So Vilnius was designated as a capital of European culture. In the Middle Ages, when the Grand Dukes ruled, the ancient capital of Trakai was the political center of power of Lithuania, and the royal bodyguards also settled here. The later built water castle is a real landmark of Lithuanian history, and also the origin of Trakai. Grand Duke Vytautas had the water castle extended and from it ruled a vast empire, which for a short time stretched from the Baltic to the Black Sea. Tatars, Russians and Ukrainians attended meetings of the council here, and loyal personal guards protected the prince. The old Jewish Tatars who lived on the Krim were known for their loyalty and defiance of death. The large throne hall consists of stones and bricks of different sizes and contains typical Gothic vaults and arched windows. Grand Duke Vitatus was well educated, spoke German, Italian and Russian and understood Tatar. He was also very hospitable. A number of the exhibition rooms feature objects that date back to those times, and game scenarios evoke the atmosphere of the royal court. The wife of Vitatus accompanied her husband on his travels, and she was also able to read and write. The castle contains a coin collection that covers several centuries. embossed coins made of various metals. Indeed, it was the Duke Vitatus who made an alliance with the Teutonic Order and came to power in 1390. Within the former treasury are objects that belong to the Teutonic Knights. Magnificently crafted jugs, plates and cups of gold. Trakai still emits power. Around 40 kilometers northwest of Vilnius lies the archaeological site of Kerneva, Lithuania's Troy. The exhibits date from the 10th century BC until the early Middle Ages. During the first centuries AD, large settlements were established in the Pajalta Valley, which were protected by the castle mountains. The 
There is evidence that mounds were created in order to support various fortifications. They were named Castle Mountains. A most powerful system was created here. Five imposing castle buildings formed a common defense complex that protected the settlement in the Bajata Valley. The reconstruction of a medieval settlement shows a fenced off area with numerous scattered wooden huts. Simple tree trunks served as a universal building material. This is where many families lived together, a primordial cell of settlements and later cities. As excavation has taken place here for many years, the Archaeological Museum is an important building. Here, artifacts found from the Iron until the Middle Ages are displayed, according to location and time periods. Evidence of a burial culture was discovered, such as the tomb of a horse that was found in 1998. Most of the exhibits are associated with medieval times, such as artistic objects and a variety of wonderful items of jewellery. The Middle Ages were the time when Kernova became the oldest known capital in Lithuania, even prior to that of Trakai. A medieval burial site with valuable grave contents was discovered in 1994. Here are the roots of the Lithuanian state. Kaunas is conveniently located in the middle of the country, at the confluence of the Namunas and Neris. Freedom Boulevard is the main artery of Neustadt, one of the longest pedestrian zones in Europe. It ends with the Neo-Byzantine Church of St. Michael Archangel Soboris, a city landmark with five domes. In contrast to the external splendor of this monumental building, its pillared interior is relatively plain. The old town with its partially preserved castle has retained the charm of medieval times. Traditional festivals held within the castle grounds have been popular for several years. The centre of the old town is Town Hall Square that contains a church that resembles the white-coloured town hall with its 53 metre high tower. Trees and old lamps adorn the square from which there are several small lanes. The nearby Perkunas House was the prestigious merchant home of the Hanseatic League in the 15th century, a beautifully preserved example of brick Gothic. Vitatus Church was built on the banks of the river Nimunus. It was attended by resident foreign merchants in around 1400 AD. Both the church and tower are examples of Lithuanian Gothic. This sacred building belonged to the Franciscans who lived in a wooden monastery next door. The building frequently experienced wars, fire and floods, but it was rebuilt upon the footprint of a Latin cross.
Southwest of the town is what is known as Damned Lake. And here, the strict order of the Camaldolisi established a Baroque monastery complex in the 17th century. Under the direction of the Italian brothers Puccini from Florence, arose a magnificent church building of which the interior was created by numerous designers from across Europe. The hexagonal colored dome structure is decorated with a fresco, coronation of Mary in the sky, and is supported by huge marble columns. After the Second World War, the monastery and church collapsed. Its restoration began in 1964. Kaunas Zoo is situated in a deep valley on the slopes of Gestupas Creek by the northern flank of Vitaltus Park. This, the only zoo in Lithuania, is situated in a tranquil location although the enclosures do not appear to coincide with contemporary expectations. Planning began in 1935 and it was inaugurated in 1938 and featured 40 animals. Located north of the Baltic Sea is Klaipeda, Lithuania's third largest city. Few records exist of the Castrum Memere that was founded by the Livonian order, with its nucleus in the mouth of the Dana. Within the hill fort is a large exhibition that documents the long and colorful history of the city. A model of its early days depicts how it all began. In front of the old town, moored on the banks of the Dana, is the sailing ship Meridanus, a turn windjammer that was built in Finland. By filling in some of the moats, a marketplace was built here in the 17th century. Today there are monuments, fountains, theatres and fine buildings. Theatre Square became the centre of the old town. Particularly striking are its half-timbered buildings, a mixture of multi-floored warehouses and residential buildings now fully restored. Testimonies of German times. The old main post office building in Linden Avenue is one of the city's most impressive buildings. A combination of neo-Gothic, classicism and Art Nouveau. Sculpture Park was built in 1977, with modern sculptures created by various Lithuanian sculptors. Next, in nearby Palanga, on what is known as the Amber Coast, we visit the Amber Museum. The largest piece of amber found in Lithuania is exhibited here. As well as gorgeous jewellery made from fossil resin that petrified under natural pressure over a period of millions of years. A short ferry ride across the Coronian Lagoon from Klaipeda to Coronian Spit reveals the most extraordinary landscape in Lithuania. Alexander von Humboldt described this natural phenomenon as one of the strangest and most beautiful coastal regions in Europe. 
But the ecological balance of the peninsula is fragile, since centuries ago deforestation was carried out on a large scale. This, the Sahara of the Baltic coast, was a disaster for its inhabitants. However, at the same time, tourism began to grow because of this natural phenomenon. Here, the Panitan Dune is a good example. On one side, forest up to the edge of the dune, and on the other, sand to the coast. Nida is the southernmost region of the Lithuanian section of the peninsula. Colorfully decorated fishermen's houses offer souvenirs for sale. It's very popular with tourists. Painters and writers have always used the beauty of Nida as a source of inspiration, including Thomas Mann, who built a summer house here in 1929, which is now a museum and meeting place. Nida's small cemetery is located within a sparse forest. There are various wooden crosses, along with the tombs of famous citizens, such as Hermann Bloder. In front of the historical museum, a Curonian fishing boat is exhibited, and wooden Curonian pennants indicate the direction of the wind. Its association with water has remained, although often only for leisure purposes. A trip in a Curonian fishing boat is a must. The spit at its narrowest point is 98 kilometers long and 380 meters wide. It separates the lagoon from the Baltic Sea. In a thousand years, both wind and waves have united the small islands into a complete unit. And this natural world has been saved just in time. On the edge of the Zemite Highland in the north lies Sialdiai, Lithuania's fourth largest city, much of which had to be rebuilt after the Second World War. And that, since the 16th century, has been an important market and trading city. Sundial Square is the city's main landmark with its impressive sundial that was created for the city's 750th jubilee in 1986. Sialiai has several green parks which make it easy to forget the fact that the city has been repeatedly attacked, plundered and destroyed. With its narrow windows and towers, the Renaissance Peter and Paul Church resembles a castle. It is the last surviving monument of the old city. Its interior is dominated by plain white, plus the Stations of the Cross and golden chandeliers. It is Lithuania's Bishop's Cathedral of the Roman Catholic Diocese. Outside the city is a pilgrimage site of both religious and political significance, the Hill of the Crosses, that contains around 50,000 crosses. The symbol of Lithuania's resistance and independence was destroyed repeatedly by its enemies but was nevertheless rebuilt and further extended. Full of European history, Lithuania has become a modern-day country. With magnificent castles, ancient towns, nature and culture, a destination that is bound to please.